Hello there. Banning the odd terrorist group now and again is making no difference. Root out the individuals concerned and then jail and deport where necessary. So another support group for a well-known demographic is to be placed on the prescribed list. That tells us a lot. Firstly, it tells us that there is a growing security problem with some members of a certain religious grouping. And secondly, that the religious grouping concerned has no fear of spouting their c*** openly and publicly in the UK, even if it is illegal and they face going to court and facing punishment. They do not care, because their beliefs trump all of that. The Home Secretary, James Cleverly, has laid a draft order in Parliament to proscribe, that is, to ban, one of the groups behind the pro-Palestine marches, Hitzbut Tahrir. That, by the way, is already banned in Germany, Bangladesh, China, Pakistan, Kazakhstan, as well as all other Central Asian countries, Indonesia, as well as all Arab countries except Lebanon, Yemen and the UAE. So it looks like the UK is very late to the party here. But it does add it to a growing list of over 50 prescribed organisations in the UK. But let's see if the members of Hitzbut Tahrir take any heed or just swap to a new organisation with a fresh name. And then the security forces have to go through all the same procedures again to get that one banned if it does anything at all. But the same people will be behind that new group. But when Labour gets in, I expect there'll be a reason to uh, clear them anyway. But surely if an organisation becomes proscribed, it means that those that run it have been guilty of breaking some crime or other. So are we going to see prosecutions and deportations over it? And why are we seeing a growth in the number of people and organisations in the UK that are basically anti-UK to the point of criminality? Could it have anything at all to do with our government's slovenly approach to controlling our borders? Anyway, I get the feeling that the government was hoping that MI5 would come up with the name of a far-right group to proscribe. Maybe Rishi and his mob were hoping their current nemesis, Reform UK, could be put on the list. Then they could arrest Tice and Farage, something the lefties, including many in the Tory party, have been dreaming of for years. And while we're busy trying to keep the lid on security perils at home, the Defence Secretary Grant Shapps has announced that we'll be allocating 20,000 armed forces personnel for a huge Russia-deterring NATO exercise in Europe for the next few months. And to put that 20,000 into context, 16,000 of them will be army personnel to be deployed across Eastern Europe. That 16,000 out of an army strength of 75,000, or 21.3% of the army, and much of its kit will go through with it. But over the weekend, the Telegraph reported that out of those 75,000 soldiers, only 53,000 are fully fit for the front line. That means 22,000 are not fit to fight. So with 20,000 in Eastern Europe and 22,000 unfit, that means that only 46% of the army will remain in the UK and be fit to fight. While the Defence Secretary is telling us, via a Lancaster House speech today, that the world has moved into a pre-war phase. And that the UK should be preparing to go to war with China, Russia North Korea and Iran within the next five years. And the UK is totally unprepared. The timescales involved in reversing previous calamitous defence decisions will be long and expensive. And far from building up our defences in the name of if you want peace, prepare for war, we've been comprehensively dismantling our armed forces to pay for an unsustainable peace.
and Les Shapps has a top-secret super-weapon up his sleeve that no one knows about. Maybe he thinks he can just type how do I win war into chat GPT or something. And on top of that, we've been allowing an enemy within to indoctrinate our children against the very country that they live in. A country that their forebears did their best to build into a country for us to be proud of. Many of them even gave their lives for it. Will we ever, ever learn? I'm not sure we will. And while all this was going on, part three of the Rochdale Grooming Gang report came out. And when talking about it, the Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, referred to the victims as young women. Richard. Rochdale. Stop telling me that all people are equal and the same, and that we are all one people. Just because our blood may be the same colour, it doesn't make us all the same. And no, I don't care what colour your skin is or your ethnicity. However, there are fundamental differences between us, based on, let's just say, our software. Look, I have just been reading about the way the, the police allowed the abuse of our young in Rochdale to carry on, virtually un unopposed. Abuse which was perpetrated by a certain problematic demographic in our society and country and in Europe. People who spoke out against this abuse were then branded racists and far-right and phobes. I'm not going into the full detail of the horror of what, what went on there. And as many of you know, I don't do detail. That's Jeff's job because he's Mr. Detail and meticulous in his breakdowns. My job is to provide broader context to the news and reframe it properly for you, so... I have to say, the utter depravity of the, the perpetrators of these hideous crimes, which include not just a certain type of hideous abuse, but also murder. I mean, I, I'm most certain, because of this, I most certainly will not be going into detail, not here anyway. The people who did this on such a scale are not like us because their belief system allows them to commit such evil on a grand scale that it must have met with complete approval from within their communities. So according to a report or review cited by the BBC, 96 known men, known, who some of you would say are from a a certain problematic demographic. These people carried out attacks repeatedly in an industrial scale abuse scandal against youngsters. Apparently, these 96 men were only a proportion of the men involved. Sort of a tip of an iceberg. This all took place between 2004 and 2011. And I ask you if you think things have changed in the way that this demographic views our young and vulnerable. Do you think that's changed? Well, no, is the short answer, because they have a set of beliefs in their programming that says people, in particular females who are not of the same programming, are lesser people to them, and thus fair game for exploitation. You see, whilst the liberal left are telling us that we are all one people and all the same, the demographic which they think are the same as us and them are being welcomed into this country and Europe by these liberal left traitors. Anyway, these welcomed people hold very different views uh, to the liberal left, which, if, if placed in isolation, would make even the, the, the most ardent libtards categorise them as far right. And they would be correct in that assessment. Until the programming of the imported is removed, and that specific belief system and software is banned from civilised society, our children will continue to fall prey to a demographic that hates us. And there will be always be another Rochdale, Rotherham or Telford scandal, scandal waiting to emerge. The police will and can do nothing because to stop this abuse, it would mean they would have to confront a certain demographic who will fight back and play the race card, even though it is wholeheartedly inapplicable in this case. And also, I would... I wonder how many senior people within the police and establishment, how many of those establishment figures may have also been involved with these 
crimes against our young, facilitated by a certain demographic. A man called Tommy, he goes into some details of this sort of thing um, with, the, with his superb journalism. So it's worth checking him out on Rumble. Go and have a look. He's got a great channel over there. Anyway, what do you Celia's and Cecil's think about what has been said in today's video? Leave your mesmerizing brilliances in the comment section below for Jeff and I to read. And anyway, God bless all of you and bye for now.